Picture this. You're a 36-year-old video game developer who has been discouraged by negative reviews of your previous work. A particularly disparaging review comparing your game's animation to animatronics inspires you to give one last shot at being a full-time game developer, this time taking a different route than usual, with a horror game centered around creepy animatronics. While your previous games hadn't really taken off, this one blew up and turned into an entire franchise, spawning sequels, lore, and merchandise. This is what what happened to one Scott Cawthon, creator of Five Nights at Freddy's. Much like games mentioned in previous videos of mine, everything you experience on the audio end of Five Nights at Freddy's is almost entirely made up of royalty-free sound effects. While the sounds in Five Nights at Freddy's have nowhere near as shady of origins as Roblox's, for example, which I've talked about previously, many of them still have interesting backstories. I don't blame Scott either, he wasn't a sound designer and probably couldn't have hired one, and without the usage of these sound effects, the game wouldn't have been a scary for most people. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the origins of sound effects used in the first and second Five Nights at Freddy's games. Five Nights at Freddy's was made with the game development software Click Team Fusion 2.5, and as a result, you have to use a program to extract sound files from the game. Unlike other games which have their assets open, accessible, and free to dig around in, FNAF and its sequels hide their assets. You'll notice upon ripping the game's sounds to your computer that most of the sound effects in the game have copyright 2006 sound dogs in the metadata. First, I'll be talking about the atmospheric tracks heard throughout the nights of the first game. The main ambience heard throughout the game is an alternate version of Cold Presence by Eric Haddad. This version is much slower than the original and much darker sounding as a result. The eerie ambience that the player hears when one of the animatronics has moved comes from Sound Ideas Series 6000 Sound Library, listed under the name Sci-Fi Ambience Giant Hollow Tube Sector. This audio could be purchased for $8 and is much higher quality than the version used in game. Most of the audio files heard in the first Five Nights at Freddy's game are not only low quality, but 49 out of the 52 audio files used are in mono instead of stereo. Stereo audio means you can hear different signals in different ears, like if I were to play a sound only in the right channel, but mono audio means that only one channel's worth of audio is being used. The window scare audio clip is a good example of this with it being slightly louder in the right ear than the left. On top of that, half of the sounds heard in the game have a sample rate of 22,050 Hz, where audio quality is clearly affected, especially with higher end frequencies. So when you hear the original version of the giant hollow tube sector ambience, with more than double the sample rate and double the channels, there's a a very clear and audible quality difference. It's unknown if this audio quality was a result of Click Team Fusion compressing audio, or Scott buying lower quality alternatives to these audio clips for a lower price. Audio being mono or stereo doesn't matter for most of the sounds anyway because they end up getting panned in the game, but the low quality audio is very noticeable. It's fascinating how well executed the sound design in the game is, considering it was done with so little. Quickly breezing through the sound effects from both Sound Ideas and SoundDogs.com, the fan and buzzing fluorescent light sound ambience, camera sound effects, crowd of children cheering sound effect, the chime melody that plays at 6am, door sounds, pots and pans rustling, the occasional circus music, sounds that play when the animatronics enter the office while the camera is up, and the music box that plays when the power runs out, all come from Sound Ideas, or Sound Dogs royalty free libraries. While many of the sound effects used in the game originate from Sound Ideas libraries of royalty free sound effects, they still have Sound Dogs copyright in the metadata, as Sound Dogs partnered with Sound Ideas in the past and redistributed some of the Sound Ideas libraries. When you remove the audio with Sound Dogs or a Sound Ideas copyright attributions, you're left with 12 sounds, most of which we've already talked about. Most of these sounds are slightly modified versions of Sound Dog sounds, such as the sound effect for Foxy singing, which is a Sound Dog sound effect with an added delay effect. Windows Scare's origin isn't fully known, but it's most likely this is another modified audio from the Sound Ideas libraries or Sound Dogs website. As a higher pitched version can be heard in the trailer, it's likely this version heard in the trailer is the original sound. The powering down sound effects origin isn't totally clear either. Considering its low pitch, it's likely that this is another sound effect that was taken from a sound library before being pitched down or modified in some way for its inclusion in the game. 
This is also the lowest quality sound effect in the game, having a sample rate of 11,025 hertz. Here's what it sounds like when my voice is the same quality as the powered down sound effect. The phone calls at the start of each night, labeled voiceover 1 through 5 in the game, were made by Scott Cawthon. These voiceovers, however, include sound effects from various libraries, such as the phone ringing at the start of each from Sound Dogs, and Alien Language 06 from the Sound Ideas Jurassic Dinosaur Sound Effects Library. And to end my chapter, about sounds from Five Nights at Freddy's 1, the screaming jump scare sound effect comes from a 1981 horror movie named Horror Planet or Inseminoid in the UK, which is about a team of astronauts that go to a distant planet and one of them gets impregnated by an alien. The scream sound effect is simply a distorted version of the audio from a scene where the lady gives birth to an alien baby. No, I am not joking. X Scream 2, the Golden Freddy jump scare sound effect is a much lower pitched version of the same scream. As a quick interlude between the two chapters, I'd like to point out that Five Nights at Freddy's and its sequel are essentially navigatable slideshows. Everything you see in the game is a sprite inside the game, instead of the 3D models being imported into the game and moved around inside the code. For example, the cameras are still image files inside the game's files. Anyways, on to Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Just months after the successful release of Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Scott Cawthon releases its sequel. I surveyed about 200 people from my Discord server on what the most iconic sound in the Five Nights at Freddy's series was, and one of the most common responses was the ambience heard when an animatronic gets close to the office in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. This is another slightly edited sound dog sound effect, edited to make it loop better. What's interesting is that the sound can no longer be found on the modern day Sound Dogs website, but it can still be found on sites like Pond5, which is another popular free sound effects website. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 sounds are a lot less interesting than the sounds of its prequel, as almost every sound in the game is a Sound Dogs sound effect with no interesting backstory. However, there are still a few audio files used that have interesting details to note about them, but this section will be way quicker. After the introduction cutscene upon opening Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the first thing you hear is the sound Sand Temple by Bjorn Lin, but not the whole song, instead one of its many variations. The Sand Temple by Bjorn Lin is a cinematic royalty-free track composed in 2002. On sites where licenses to the song can be bought, 12 variations of the song can be found and bought for lower prices than the whole track, which is sold for $34.95. 10 of these variations are loops, with the iconic Five Nights at Freddy's 2 title screen music being the 7th loop, titled Loop G. Scott bought this music during the game's creation for $10. This same composer also created Urban Darkness, the title screen music for Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is the first time we see sound effects likely created entirely by Scott himself. These sounds are Cake 2, Coin, Effect 3, and Pop, all of which are incredibly simple sounds which can be made with the simplest of equipment. Balloon Boy's Hi and Hello voice clips both come from the Nightingale Voice Box Sound Library, but it's worth mentioning that the Hello is meant to be the voice of a 6 year old boy, while the Hi voice clip is labeled as being from a girl, despite their voices almost sounding exactly the same. The ambience, intro sounds, static, save them speak and spell dialogue used during minigames, balloon boy voice clips, chimes, mask sounds, vent walking sounds, and music box music are all from sound dogs with little to no modifications made to them. In comparison to the sounds with sample rates as low as 11,025 hertz in the first game, 13 sounds used in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 have a sample rate of 8,000 hertz. A sample rate with less bandwidth than your average phone call. Most of these low quality sounds are the sounds heard when animatronics call through the vents, cut out of longer audio files from Sound Dogs libraries by Scott himself. To end this video, I'd like to say that a lot can be made with even the most bare bones of resources, which is why Five Nights at Freddy's turned into a globally known franchise, despite its humble origins. If you enjoyed, do things you do after you watched a video you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.